All right, welcome back. Mark Thompson here with head coach Larry Corville of the Reading Royals. We're at Santander Arena, Reading, Pennsylvania, up in the Super Suite as we do our summer signing series. This one a little bit different. We're going to talk today on July 1st, big day in pro hockey. Qualifying offers go out uh, really in all of professional hockey, whether it's the National League, American League, ECHL. Qualifying offers are out now for you. We're going to talk about some of the guys that you've made qualifying offers. You're allowed to make eight. Let's first of all start, Coach, uh, with what is a qualifying offer? Well, a qualifying offer is a player that signed an ECHL, uh, ECHL contract the year before. Um, usually a second year player, it's a, it's a 5% raise based on what he got paid the year before. And uh, if you're not signed uh, to an ECHL contract before July 1st, we usually qualify up to eight players that we uh, retain their rights for the following year for the 2014-2015 season. Now, obviously, we've announced earlier today this first signing for the Royals, Sean Wiles. You've got a bunch of other guys signed as well, principally from the team last year and others, and we'll announce those over the course of the season. I don't think we're giving away too much here when we talk about the guys that you've made a qualifying offer to. There's no need to make a qualifying offer to a guy who's already signed. So you've got eight guys who you have uh, made these qualifying offers to, and we'll just list them out. It's Mike Banwell, Matt Campanelli, Louis Caparuso, Julian Caillé, Ethan Cox, Ian O'Connor, Nick Brunito, who joined the team late last year, and Brandon Blandina are the eight players that have made these qualifying offers to. I would imagine that a big part of making the offer is the fact that you can retain the rights of those players if they don't sign this offer, if they don't sign another contract with the team, you still hold their rights for a full year. Right. They, if they're going to play in the East Coast Hockey League, either they play for me or I trade their rights somewhere else, or they go to Europe or the Central League, they don't have an option to go any, to any other team in the, in the East Coast Hockey League. And uh, like you mentioned, I've already signed some returning players that we haven't discussed yet. And these are the remaining guys that we haven't uh, signed to an ECHL contract as of date. Some important names on this list. I think the one that stands out to a lot of Royals fans is a guy who's really been instrumental since you picked him up in uh, March of 2012 to be with the team. That's Ethan Cox, one of the alternate captains, certainly one of the leadership guys over the couple, last couple of years, including in the Kelly Cup championship year of 2013. Ethan, as everybody knows, real sharp guy. He's got a lot of things on the plate there. Uh, his wife was staying in uh, the Pacific Northwest last year. What do you know about the status of Ethan Cox right now? Well, we're still unsure. You know, I've, I've had several discussions with Ethan. Um, you know, he's gotten a point in career where he may decide to pack it in, or but he wants to continue to play hockey. You know, he got married last week uh, to his wife up in Seattle and uh, is looking for a full-time position uh, for a career outside of hockey and uh, really hasn't got anything yet. Uh, and is considering playing. Um, you know, one of the things I talked to Ethan about is is uh, being part of our coaching staff and, and learning the coaching experience. So, so eventually, maybe you can grow into being become a coach and maybe take my role at some point. But uh, you know, um, so that's one of the things we discuss. He wants to play, but he also realizes you know he can't spend his whole career in the East Coast Hockey League and. Uh, he started a new chapter here with his wife, and uh, but he's a key guy that I'd love to have back, and hopefully uh, sooner than later we'll get him returning and uh, be a big part of our team again. Are you trying to tell us something there, Coach, with respect to getting somebody uh, to take your role here? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. So at some point, somebody's got to let me go, right? So I think a guy like Cox could be a... Uh, just with his character and what he's done in, in, in the ECHL, and uh, I think he could be a great coach at this level. Obviously, we could go through each player. Another guy that stands out to uh, the fans, I think, in Reading, however, is Julian Kaye. He, he was a player who I think we saw in his first season, a very uh, a solid person and player. Last year, had a difficult go for the team. Got it, took a what I considered to be a relatively dirty hit early in the season, yep. and it seemed like the symptoms from that hit kind of recurred with him late in the season. What is the status right now of Julian Kaye? Well, I actually spoke to Julian. Yeah, that one's still kind of in the air. He's being evaluated uh, from a doctor, I believe, within the next week or two, up in Canada. And uh, looking at his concussion issues, there's no question he had a couple last year that can be scary for a player and uh, his status is still unsure whether he'll be able to play this year or not. Um, so he's a guy definitely I would love to have back, his character, the way he plays, his energy, uh, the way he is in our locker room. Uh, he's well liked, he's uh, he's a funny guy and, and he works uh, extremely hard and he's a big part of our penalty kill. So 
he's a guy I'd love to have back. It's still kind of up in the air, and that's why we decided to qualify him, see what happens here in the next couple of weeks. Another guy that stands out for me was Matt Campanelli. I thought Matt Campanelli was a very important component to what had to be considered one of the best defensive cores in the ECHL last year. Mike Banwell's on this list as well, Matt Campanelli. Banwell is obviously a guy that's played a lot of games in the American Hockey League. Matt Campanelli has played in the American League as well. And I know that you're trying to rebuild that defensive core because you don't win in pro hockey without a very strong six or seven or eight D-man that you can get. For sure. That's also goaltending, too, would be a big part of that defensive core, right? So uh, Campanelli still, we've, uh, you know, dis discussing things with his agent, uh, Matt, uh, if he's going to play in the East Coast, he wants to come back to Reading. He lives locally, enjoyed his time here last year. Uh, he's an older guy, of course. Uh, I think he'd be going into his fifth year, fourth or fifth year. Um, as l looking at some uh, some possibilities over in Europe uh, from the last we spoke, uh, doesn't really have a great offer in place, and uh, he might be a little more time here to decide, you know to see what he decides he wants to do. But definitely, that's why we qualify him as an option there for us to return and. Uh, I'm sure we'll we'll know one way or the other sooner, the, pretty soon, I think. Now, speaking of Europe, Louis Caparuso left the team midseason to go over and play in Europe. As I understand, there's a little bit maybe uh, more difficult uh, standards now in for North American players going over to Europe this year. Not saying that Louis Caparuso can't land a job in Europe or, you know, who knows what else in the in North American hockey league, uh, hockey leagues. Yep. But Louis Caparuso is the quality of type of player that it would be kind of foolish not to protect him by sending out a qualifying offer to him. Yeah, Louis was a good, pl a great player for us. You know, when he, uh, by the time he left to go to the Dell in Germany, you know, he was our leading scorer, our leading point getter, and uh, you know, some role changes have um, ha have happened in, in in Germany where they've uh, limited the amount of uh, imports they can bring in and. Uh, you know, Louis has already re-signed for Ger to go back to Germany. Uh, this rule change happened after he signed, so you're going to see a number of guys possibly not be able to uh, make their club or be let go and, and pursue different avenues. So he's a guy I thought, uh, you know, if, if that happens or something happens in Germany where the new coach or he doesn't perform well and he's an import guy, usually those are the first guys that got, that have to go and. I'm sure he'll have other opportunity to go back to different teams in Europe, but um, you know we are a, a place that he enjoyed playing. Unfortunately, he left us, and you know, of course, I wasn't happy that he did that. But he's a key guy that if he wants to come back and play for for us or in our league, he's definitely valuable, a, val a valuable asset. All right, head coach Larry Corville of the Reading Royals, Mark Thompson, team broadcaster here. Qualifying offers going out as throughout uh, pro hockey right now on July 1st, 2014. Mike Banwell, Matt Campanelli, Louis Caparuso. Julian Kaya, Ethan Cox, Ian O'Connor, Nick Brunito, and Brandon Blandina. Coach, I want to thank you once again for stopping by and speaking with us about the qualifying offers this year. Thanks for having me.